Welcome to Electron Online, and here's our first example of how to find the x and y intercepts. Of course, the x intercepts are the root of the parabola, and the y intercept also helps us graph parabolas. And also, we should determine if the parabola opens upward or downward. The equation for the parabola is y equals x squared minus 2x plus uh, minus 3. Notice that the coefficient in front of the first term, we can say that a is greater than 0. So therefore, we know that the parabola opens upward, which means we have a minimum value. We know that the parabola is going to look something like this, opening upward with some vertex, which will then become the minimum value of the parabola. But we don't know yet if it has real roots, imaginary roots, just one root. If it's above or below the x-axis, we don't know that yet. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the roots if they exist. So we can say that uh, to find the roots, we're going to set y equal to 0. So we do that to find the two roots. So 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. Remember, when the parabola crosses the x-axis, that's where y is equal to 0. That's where we find the roots. We're going to use a quadratic formula. Notice that the general, the general equation of a parabola is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 2, and c is equal to negative 3. So they, therefore we can say that x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. We plug in the values, so we get x is equal to minus b, but we have a minus 2 already, so minus minus 2 would be a plus 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's minus 2 quantity squared, minus 4, that should be parentheses, there we go, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is a minus 3, all divided by 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. Simplifying this, we get x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 4, now this minus times this minus is a plus, that would be plus 4 times 3 is 12, all divided by 2, and then we have x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 12, that would be 16, divided by 2, and of course the square root of 16 is 4, so that then simplifies to 2 plus or minus 4 divided by 2, which offers up two possible solutions. So the first solution is when we add the two together, 2 plus 4 is 6, divided by 2 gives me 3. And the other possible solution is when we subtract 2 minus 4 is a minus 2, divided by 2 is a minus 1. So the two possible solutions is that x is equal to 3 or x is equal to negative 1. And then going back over here to our determinant, remember, the determinant always determines whether or not we have solutions, whether we have what we call roots for the equation. And if this is positive, that means we have two roots. If this is zero, that means we have one root. If it's less than zero, we know we have no real roots, only imaginary roots. In the case that this was greater than zero, like 16, we knew we were going to end up with two roots. Those are the two roots, and we can grab those on the uh, parabola, on the graph. So here's our y-axis, here's our x-axis. So the two places where the graph will cross the x-axis is where x is equal to 3, 1, 2, 3 right there, and where x is equal to negative 1, negative 1 right there, so 3 and negative 1. We also know that the parabola opens upward, so then we know that it's going to look something like this. Here now, of course, we use the quadratic formula to solve for the two roots, but sometimes you can also simply factor the equation. So let's take the equation again. We have y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3, and if we try to factor that, well, first of all, we can set y equal to 0. So we have 0 is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3, right? We set y equal to 0 to find the roots. That's the methodology. But now let's try to factor this. So 0 is equal to, can we turn this into the product of two binomials? Which means we need to have an x and an x. Since this is negative, that means 1 is positive, 1 is negative. The two numbers together give me negative 3. When I multiply them together, I get negative 3. And when I add them, I get a negative 2, which means I need to have a negative 3 and a plus 1, because x times negative 3 is negative 3x. x times 1 is plus 1x. Negative 3 plus 1 it gives me negative 2x. That's the correct uh, factor. Now, 
What this means is I'm multiplying two things together, x plus 1 with x minus 3. When I multiply them together, I get 0, which means that either x plus 1 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0, which then, of course, means that x is equal to negative 1 or x is equal to 3. And there you go. Those are the two roots that we found exactly like we did here with the um, quadratic equation. The last thing we're going to do is find the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, find the y-intercept, we must set x equal to 0. Notice here where the parabola crosses the y-axis, x is equal to 0, so that's how we find the y-intercept. We set x equal to 0, set, oop, set x equal to 0, and we take our original equation, and therefore we write y is equal to, and of course y, when x is equal to 0, is equal to, it's always better to write it like that, that makes a little, it makes a little bit more sense that way. So we plug in a 0 for every x, so we have 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 3, and of course that means that y, when x is equal to 0, is equal to minus 3, and then we come back up here, 1, 2, 3, that's minus 3. That means we know the graph crosses that point as well. Now we're ready to graph the parabola. We know that it has to go to two points. We know that we have a minimum value because it opens upward. And so the parabola will look something like this. All right. Now, also going back, and remember how to find the vertex. To find the x value of the vertex right there, what do we do? We can say that x sub v is equal to minus b divided by 2a. So in this case, that's equal to minus b is a minus 2, so minus times a minus 2 divided by uh, 2 times a, and a is just simply 1. So this is equal to minus times a minus, that's uh, 2 divided by 2, which is equal to 1. So we know that the x vertex, the x component of the vertex is equal to 1, so that we know that this is where we find the lowest point on the parabola, therefore this is the minimum value. And that's how we do that.